When more than one electron is around an atom, those electrons have a set of four quantum numbers. And they'll occupy the available orbitals around an atom, but they'll do it in very specific ways. They'll follow very specific rules. One of those rules is of the four quantum numbers, n, l, m sub l, and m sub s, each electron must have a unique set. No two electrons can have exactly the same quantum numbers. That's called the Pauli exclusion principle. Now, there's other rules that they follow. For instance, if there's degenerate energy levels, and we know when we have the p orbitals, there's three that are of the same energy. How do the electrons choose to occupy those? Well, there are several possibilities. They could go in to the same orbital, spin up and spin down. That would give them different quantum numbers. m sub s would be different, although n, l, and m sub l would be the same. They could have different m sub l values and different m sub s values. So they could go in spin anti-parallel, or they could go in spin parallel. So the difference would be in the value of m sub l only. m sub s would be the same. They'd go in parallel. Now, you might think that the parallel orientation would be favored because the electrons, remember, behave like they're little magnets. So if one goes in this way, having one go in this way would have them anti-parallel. And a lower energy orientation is to have them lined up with each other. And indeed, if you have electrons anti-parallel, that's a little bit higher energy. They like to be parallel. So it turns out that the electrons like to spread out in space. That makes sense because they, they have negative charges. You wouldn't want to cram them both in the same orbital if you didn't have to. So they spread out as far as possible, and they go in spin parallel. So these two possible possibilities don't happen. These are higher energy situations. They're not disallowed by any quantum mechanical rules, but they're higher in energy. So this is called Hund's rule. And it turns out electrons enter degenerate orbitals the same way people get on a bus. You know, if you get on a bus, there's a lot of seats, and they each hold two people. But if there's someone sitting in one seat, do you go in and sit right next to them in the same seat? <laughs> no. You go sit in a seat far away from them. Do you go in, sit in a seat near them and face them? No. You go and sit in the same direction, facing away on the bus. Electrons enter orbitals the same way people enter seats on a bus. Let's look at that. I've, I've chosen to use as my model for electrons the universal eating implement, the spork. I do that because sporks have a preferred orientation. I can tell this spork is pointing up and this spork is pointing down. So let's bring in some sporks as electrons to these two energy levels. The first one can go in either spin up or spin down. If there's no other spins there, then it doesn't matter. The space is what we call isotropic. There are no other fields involved. So the magnetic field can be either up or down. But the way the first one goes in determines how the second one goes in. Now the second electron comes in, he says, no, I don't want to sit there. I want to sit here, far away, and spin parallel to the first spin. The next spin that comes in now is forced to sit next to somebody. Because the next, these are the only degenerate energy levels. There may be higher energy levels up here, but these are lower energy. It's cheaper in energy to pair spin up, spin down, than go to a higher energy level. So the next electron will go in anti-parallel. And I go in anti-parallel because if I go in parallel here, these electrons will have exactly the same quantum numbers. And the Pauli exclusion principle says I cannot do that. Electrons are fermions. They're spin 1 half. And fermions follow this Pauli exclusion principle, where no two can have exactly the same quantum numbers. They can't occupy the same space at the same time. You can think of that m sub s quantum number as a time quantum number. It says, I'll occupy the same space, the same orbital, but I'll do it at different times. m sub s is different, so we can both sit there. We just won't see each other in time. It's interesting, there's another class of particles called bosons that can have the same quantum numbers. They can all collapse into exactly the same quantum state. And when that happens, and this has been proven, a Nobel Prize was awarded for this, where a Bose-Einstein condensate occurs. All the quantum particles collapse into exactly the same quantum state. They exist in the same space at the same time. Matter collapsed upon itself. 
And you can Google this on the web and see some beautiful animations of a Bose-Einstein condensate, particles existing in the same space at the same time. It's a quantum feature of particles. They're wave-like. They can exist in the same space in the same time if they're bosons. They have an integer spin. Our uh, particles have non-integer spin. They are spin one half. The final electron in this set of energy levels will go in spin antiparallel here. So this set of energy levels is full. I can occupy no more. I have a spin up and a spin down, my two time coordinates, in each of the spatial n, l, and m sub l three-dimensional coordinates. This fills up this set of electrons. And this is how electrons fill energy levels, fill orbitals, fill wave functions about an atom.